Sarah Luby Gaga de Rodriguez. I'm a professional operatic soprano and also the chief speech pathologist at Voice Science, Melbourne's premier voice consulting and accent modification centre located on Collins Street in the CBD. I want to welcome you to a very short series specifically designed for teachers. Part of my role at Voice Science involves training and consulting with teachers and schools to better enable teachers to have a flexible and durable voice that will last for their careers. Teaching is a profession that we categorise as professional voice use. So although you don't step onto the stage daily, you are stepping into the classroom and engaging in up to eight to possibly 10 hours of vocal use per day with excessive background noise demands and, and you know a really strong pressure on the voice. If you're experiencing vocal changes or a loss of vocal function, I strongly recommend that you consider undertaking a diagnostic assessment to troubleshoot and brainstorm measures that can be used to better equip the voice and also to protect the voice. But in the meantime, why not subscribe to this channel? You will learn a few things about how to care for your voice and my goal is to break down and dispel some of the core myths that surround how we can protect our voice and also how we can ensure that the voice has stamina and durability. So today's myth that I'm first going to bust is the myth around throat clearing. Enjoy! You may never have heard that throat clearing is, is really, really violent for the voice. Indeed, the term throat clearing makes us feel like we're going to achieve something by doing it, like we will actually clear all that phlegm and gunk out. So important not to throat clear. Prolonged throat clearing can cause a vocal disorder in itself. What's occurring in the course of a throat clear is that the vocal muscle is rubbing against itself very unevenly, which is abrasive. And while we do it, the sound that's created, and I won't show it to you because it's total taboo for me as an opera singer, but the sound that is created from throat clear is formed by very strong air pressure levels and maximal abrasion against the surface of the vocal fold. The outcome of a throat clear will arguably, inarguably I should say, be the need to throat clear again a few seconds later or a minute or so later. It will also have an impact on voice quality and if you're doing it often, it could be one of the key reasons why you might be experiencing vocal roughness or hoarseness. Try not to do it. Alternatives to throat clearing are trying to distract yourself from the need to throat clear. I might often feel the need to throat clear in the middle of an aria. Instead, I just try and think ahead and, and try and convince myself that a throat clear actually isn't a throat clear. It's more like sandpapering my voice. You may also like to have a small sip of water, although water doesn't go down the vocal tract. If it did, we'd be in big trouble because it would hit our lungs via the trachea. Uh, the water can have a sort of soothing quality. Other people often uh, might like to do just a firm swallow. That can assist a little bit. Obviously that's something you can't sort of do chronically or it feels quite uncomfortable. So don't do it, try and eliminate it. Don't do it if you're nervous before public speaking because it will set up a crackly voice. Cut it out, tell yourself it's no-no, it's a total vocal no-no.